Good, Good morning. morning from Kirkwall. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are in the Orkney Islands, which is about as far north as this ship is going to take us. It's cold today. Yeah, it should be <laughs> about 55 as a high today, mm -hmm. so I'm taking a jacket, which Same. is something I haven't done in a while. Uh, they're just making the announcements now for clearance. It is a tender port, so we have to boat to shore. Yep. But I guess we'll grab some breakfast. We've got a tour plotted today to explore some historic things in the area. It's supposed to be really cool. Yeah, through Orkney travel, and it's about four hours worth of history, and we'll show it to you. Yeah. Let's go. Yep. Welcome back to, you guessed it, International Cafe. Breakfast success. Time to head to deck four. Well, they've already made the all calls, so there's not super much demand for the tenders. Oh, wiggly. I heard one actual ticket call announcement this morning where they're like, I think it was either Avalon, I forgot what it was, it was like a letter, yeah, and then the next announcement was like, the lines are gone for the tender boats, please come get off, so. It's early. There's only like a dozen people on this tender. We're waiting to see if more come. Let's roll. Now we climb. Right here at the top of the ramp appears to be the independent tour meeting area. Ooh, look at this town. There we go, all checked in and ready to roll. A little stretch your leg stop here, I guess, overlooking uh, the Stromness area. I think he said, Oh, yeah, there's a little cruise yeah, ship yeah. visiting Stromness today. Well, that's cool. There's a lighthouse out there. So here's a little bit of heather, it's quite, it's quite shrubby. Oh, yeah, this brown shrubbery uh, yeah, growing is heather. Now, checking the old cruise mapper website that looks like a opponent yeah. ship called Le Champlain. Stromness was the recruiting ground for the Hudson Bay Company for over 200 years. They liked Orkney men because they were good on the sea. Come out here, they could shoot, hunt, fish, adaptable. down now to another viewpoint type area with some learning signs over there. I hear lots of birds. Yeah. Uh, I think yes maybe. Somewhere in there. We've got some nice views of the water from out here. All the puffins are out at sea so we're probably not going to see any puffins today. But... Oh yeah I do thought she saw one on the ride over. We are coming down here to explore some craggy rocks. We love craggy rocks. Oh, here's where they keep their D's at the Craggy Rocks. <laughs> Hello! It's a little chilly and windy, but it's so pretty. I'm not sure if these are Craggy Rocks or Rocky Crags, but I like them. Oh, this cool landscape. Oh, we're closer to the edge. Now we get even better views. This is a lot of this is sandstone, so it mm -hmm. actually gives you all the layers are all different geological time periods. Yeah. So, but at least you can you can see the 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 different layers and the different time scales. It's, it's quite remarkable. Alright, let's motivate back toward the van. Nice little quick sightseeing stretchy legs again spot. Woohoo, I'm riding shotgun today by the way. Oh yeah. Well, our first major stop, hey there's another ordinary travel, <laughs> um, is I guess Scale House, which was just sort of panned by, and Scarabray, which I think is like a Neolithic village. We're gonna come learn. That's the official spelling, Scarabray and Scale House. Prehistoric village. So £12.50 admission. And that is included in our tour. Got fields full of prehistoric cows out there. 
Okay. Uh, Europe's best preserved Stone Age village. In all of Europe. That's pretty cool. What have we got in I'll let the tour begin. Yeah, that's so one thing Iceland has that we don't are geothermal pools. Yeah. Ah, true. Yeah, we were talking to him about just coming from Iceland. Coming this way, out Oh, fun. No, this isn't quite as bad as all that. Oop, I did just hit my head though. Hey! This is North Europe's best preserved Neolithic village. This is actually a replica. Um, and I think it's quite useful to come in just to have a quick look. So you do get an idea as, as to what it's like. Living at that time, about 5,000 years ago, there's no writing, so we don't know anything about them other than what we found. Diking is a Scottish word, which is building these without using cement. Um, and there are still professional dikers who build these, say, that this, the original stones are of a very high order. So they knew what they are about. Mmm, fish. This, he said, they thought, oh, she lobster there. Um, was like a bed. That's very small. Mm -hmm. All right, let's wander back out and see the ruins. Watch your head. <laughs> 5,000, that's a lot of years. Oh. Oh, I see, we're going, we're going back in time. We're time traveling, it's not quite like Outlander, but we are going back in time. There's the Incas. First Crusade. Oh, we're crossing into BC times. We've taken a scenic detour over here to look at the water. Is that the tides do vary quite a lot from place to place, so sometimes you just can't beat local knowledge. Hey, Stonehenge! 3100 BC. So it's about 5,000 years old, estimated. Wow, so it says it's very fragile. Stay on the path. But this is the actual ruins of exactly the, the village. And he traced these balls. They've been found all the way up the east coast of England and Scotland. And he ended up here. This is probably one of the oldest houses here. They're building 10. And um, it's, you can just sort of see the shape and the outline. But as the houses go, it's got more spot. Early houses. Oh, so if you had been able to go down into that one, maybe that's kind of what they based the replica house on. Wow. Well, there's kind of a nice view from up here on the top, looking back down over the whole complex. It's got a little house over here too. Access to the sunken houses was from a stone-lined passage that was roofed over. Oh, a whole map of the place. They think there's some more, but again, it's an old point. So they think a community of about 50 to 100 people lived here, and 10 structures remain. That's crazy because the structures look so short, but I guess a lot of this is underground. Yeah. This village was not built for me. <laughs> I'm too tall for this village. Nor I. <laughs> uh, those are like an exhibit down here. So oh wow, like everything they've seen yeah. this week. I like the dog. Dog is good. So there's no predators to the sheep. Ooh, well, it does say staff only in there. Maybe that means when the door's closed, but <laughs> sure. Also discovered in 1850. Oh, we're gonna go see some standing stones later. There, there are some standing stones on the beach. Teeny tiny baby standing stones. Well, we'll follow this little sort of beachside path back out. We go up over the top, we just walk around. But the children of the of the landowner of the 19th century played in here as kids would. So mm -hmm. They couldn't see the sea. Could we have, they have a window? So they added a window. Aww. And here it is. That's so funny. Yeah, see, these walls are getting a little taller. I might have been able to live in a structure like <laughs> that, possibly, especially with a window to see the sea. That's cute. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, looking at it from above. Yeah, there's the window. <laughs> but this, I guess, that's pretty well preserved. Wow. Yeah. But everything that we see in the replica mm -hmm. is nicely identifiable. Back down we go. If you like to have a look at the period house, it's a good example of one of those things like Captain Cook's um, 
dinner set there, there's uh, military stuff there, and there's some just lovely rooms, you know, some bedrooms where it'd be great to wake up in. But then, on the other hand, the lure of coffee. Ah, the, the cafe. Way. So, <laughs> I'm easy. I must admit, I wouldn't say no to a coffee. I've only had one this morning. <laughs> All right, so the choice was Scale House or Coffee Shop, and the group has voted Scale House. So this is the home of the gentleman who discovered the Neolithic village. Oh, they got a cannon out. <laughs> we'll go up the stairs here, or steps, I guess. Oh, they do have accessibility. Some entrance just up here on the right. Love a little sunken garden, oh, yeah, so which funny. is lovely, actually. All right, let us enter. Oh, the first thing I see from entering is me. Oh, Orkney's finest museum. Oh, it's very pretty already. I like those blue goblet glasses there. Fancy dishes. Oh, we've got a Captain James Cook connections. Mm. We've learned him in the Hawaiian history and beyond. Oh, yes. Well, let's see, I guess we'll do room two first and then go to room three. See if that makes sense. Folks were not as tall as us other than the <laughs> of these houses. Folks still aren't as tall as us. Oh, let's see, this one's just a peaky room. Let's see. Let's try not to get backlit by these windows. So this is the library. Main hall. Oh, there is indeed an upstairs. Bye. The drawing room is room four. I see this is when you can go in. At least you can go in to a certain degree. Yeah, I think we chose wisely being able to come up here and see some history. You can always get a coffee later, yeah. <laughs> the visitor's book is left open to show the signature of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Well, five might be a little bit of a squeeze. Oh, there's a ooh, nice pink bathroom. I do like that. Let's peek in here at this bedroom. theme continues in here. <laughs> well, six, we've got another bedroom and an exhibition room. We'll get another peek out here at the main hall before we move on. Oh, check out that chandelier. And a bird, bird friend. Let's sneak into the bishop's bedroom. We can wiggle around here. Some tight spaces. Try to navigate around folks as best we can. <gasps> Is that the Bishop's Dollhouse? Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. So that is St. Magnus Cathedral. Oh, and Kirkwall. Look at this cute little mouse back there too. Well, last room before the exit is the exhibition room. Oh yes, we got all sorts of learning. Learning there, learning here. This is a famous historic chair. No. Of historic history. We have a little peeky out to a central yard area. Ooh. Down we go. Well, they had an eighth room down here, which is the gun room. Victorian child's wheelchair. Alright, now we'll cross over to the gift shop toilet exit. See back over there to the village. Cannon. Well, <laughs> yeah, looks like the cafe has definitely gotten a little busier than when we walked through here the first time. Uh, the later in the day, the busier for sure. I'm glad we got to the uh, the village and stuff early today. Oh, good. The cafe itself is not super busy. It's mostly the gift shop and the admission line. 
soup and snacky things. Plowman's lunch. A little early for lunch still. There's the official coffee menu, which I just walked right by, like a smart person. We got all our fixins down here. We grabbed a couple of Americanos and something that was called a bridal slice. It looks like it has um, fruit and stuff. Marzipan on top, different layers. Oh, it looked interesting. All right, time to wander back to our van and continue the history. What's his name? Hamish the Highland Cow. Cute. Cute. Well, he was darker than that, but his name was Hamish. Stop here is at the ring. Bring a broad gar. map. That's just quite good. It gives us a reasonable idea as to where we've come from. This is one of two types of standing stone hinge style monuments I think that we're supposed to see on this tour. Let's look it. So down this little boardwalk across the street. I can see it in the distance. Oh, we've got a nice sort of fortified walking path here. Please keep to path. We can do that. There we've got some stones. Now this is a much larger and more spread out circular arrangement than something like, say, Stonehenge. You have a fly on your shoulder. He's been with you for a little while. You said the stones came from different quarries. So maybe it was like a collaborative effort of different areas. Or aliens. No, no, no. Do not try to touch the stones, okay? No. <laughs> if you time travel and see Jamie Fraser, I'm gonna be very mad. Oh, no, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me come for you, Jamie Fraser. I'll get you. Am I the only one who sings Billow and Breeze, Islands of Cheese? Is that just me? I can dream of Islands of Cheese, right? Oh, now we have a bit of a guided stroll around the ring. Well, we made it about a quarter of the way around the circle. That's kind of a cool angle there. A lot of stones in a row. Well, our guide is really trekking up here. We gotta keep up. <laughs> All right, we've kind of caught back up now so we can do a nice little stone bask. <laughs> so much stone basking. All kinds of bird noises out here. All right, we've completed the ring. I keep wanting to say Brogdar. Brodgar? I put the D and the G in the wrong place. I think it's Brodgar. Brodgar. There we go. On we go. Quite a seal spotting. The other thing to look out for here is swans. Awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I point those out because everywhere else in the British Isles, they belong to the king. Well, oh. cut a long story short, but not in Orkney and Shetland. What are the stones that yeah. have gone? And you might see if you go into Kirkwood, there's a replica called the Odin Stone. And the Odin Stone had a hole through which, you know, for people who were getting married, they'd put their hands and join either side, join their hands. And that was then meant to seal the bond. Well, we've got about five minutes to wander this site. Time is slipping away from us. So standing stones of Stennis. Now these are not roped off and it looks like people are going up to them, touching them, hugging them, kissing them, licking them, whatever they want to do. Don't run to the stones. Stop it now. I told you, Jamie Fraser, I'll get you. Oh yeah, these are just easy access. Oh, stop it. <laughs> no. Hi. Well, you didn't disappear, so that's a good sign. All right, quick peek at the stones. Quick peek at some sheep over here, because you know if they're sheep, we got to look at sheep. You know, just like there is no fence for the stones, there is no fence for these sheep. Oh, they are. I mean, you know, there's one to keep them from getting out in the road, but we can just we can just go touch the baby. I like that hairdo of the one in the back left there. It's like just blowing in the wind. It's like a 80s mullet sheep. Mutton mullet? Hmm. All right, back to the van we go. Woohoo! Welcome back to Kirkwall. I think we're gonna stay in Kirkwall. Yeah. Wander around, maybe we're find some, some food and snacks or something. The main drag is literally right there, so we'll really hit the pedestrian the crossing. Cathedral over here. Yes. Alright, let's wander. Do it. <laughs> 
Uh, this road was open to vehicle traffic when we came through this morning, but it looks like they have closed it now because two ships in port. I didn't realize Norwegian is also in port. They've docked. This will be quite the popular spot to wander around. Fish and chips, what? Orkney souvenirs. Oh, they have robots in the yard. Robots made out of, is this head a camera? It's like cyborg vloggers. <laughs> Yeah, this road just kind of curves around to the right. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Cute. Well, we've reached the end of the pedestrian area, but you can still keep walking this way, obviously. Yeah, this is all the stuff that we sort of drove by earlier because we started our tour by driving through town, which was kind of nice to see. Get a little taste of town. So this is St. Magnus Cathedral. Pretty grand. Oh, it's exactly one o'clock now. They are closing for a wedding, so we won't be dipping in there right now. Whoops. Yeah, we saw some folks all dressed up and looked like they were going to a wedding, so that makes sense. Visitor center. Oh, cool castle-y looking thing over there. We've come over to the side of St. Magnus's now. Ooh. <laughs> I say all this is part of Bishop and Earl's palace, as it looks like. There we go, seven pound fifty to enter and explore here. Well, I guess we can come have a look around their grounds anyway. Oh, well, let's come back down here to the main drag, shall we? I believe we will go ahead and have a wander back to the tenders, back to the ship. For lunch. Oh, true. There's this tree we learned about as we drove by it earlier. They put a metal rod in it to try to hold it up. Yeah. Well, we have rejoined the line for the tender. Not too bad, but we got here just in front of a big uh, coach that was unloading, so perfect timing. It's almost two already. Decided to grab a couple of room service cheeseburgers for our lunch. And one thing we learned is that if you order canned sodas, it's a 25% discount and you do pay for them. But if you order fountain sodas, those are included with, you know, your, your plus packages and whatnot. So cool. It is right around the time for last tender now. Looks like they're bringing some of these lifeboats back over, like the one right in front of our cabin. Hoisting them back up. Yeah, see the one directly in front of this one is not back yet. She'll be coming over to get lifted up into that position before we get out of here. Scotland a funnel tuner. We need that note um, sharpened up a little bit. <laughs> Guess that's us saying goodbye. 
Well, we're officially on the move now. We've come out to take in some other scenery for our sail away. Oh, apparently other people have as well. Looking all the way down to a little lighthousey looking thing on the point. All right, it is about time for dinner. Good evening and happy dinner time. Is that time? That's true. <laughs> so tell me about your day exploring the Orkney Islands history. It's, <laughs> it's beautiful. First of all, so many sheep and cows, oh. so much green, so many hills, beautiful. But like the, the history, yeah, is really cool. The Neolithic, right? Neolithic yeah, that's village. The word. I had to learn that word like, real what's fast. It called? Neolithic. Was pretty fascinating and just like how good of shape it's still in it was yeah. like amazing and then the house that we got to go in uh was really pretty i think that was kind of like a replica yeah i thought like the replica yeah. was a lot of guessing and then we literally went up and looked down in one where the yeah. roof was gone and i'm like oh this is like where they got the ideas from. yeah so many preserved things like they even had the stone where they would grind their corn into meal and all mm -hmm. that you know and then um we got to go hmm. to the standing stones yes Stennis, and the, the ring, ring of Brodgar. Rug, that one. Yeah, Whatever very cool. That, I right? like you could actually go up to the Stennis ones and uh, touch them. <laughs> you didn't disappear, so all is well. Didn't. You didn't it time travel. No, but that was really cool. And then just walking around the town, super cute. Loved mm. all the architecture and like they were having a wedding today, which is super sweet. Yeah. So like we couldn't go in the church, but I know. congratulations to the happy couple. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's it. Yo, thanks to Orkney for being Orkney. We didn't <laughs> see any puffins, but Oh, one thing to know, this is not the port not to have a plan. Well, that is true. So when you get off, normally there's tour vendors trying to sell you things like that and not taxis here. and no. Make sure you know what you're doing or just plan to walk around the very adorable town. That's cute. One of the two. Yeah, yeah. but that is true. We always take note. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think every port we've been to, somebody's been trying to sell a taxi tour. Yeah. Not here. No. <laughs> you had to either have something or don't. Yeah. So plan ahead. <laughs> All right. Dinner mode. Yeah. MDR. Activate. Let's eat it. <laughs> Down to five. with dinner they got the sisters duo out in the atrium now it is time to go into the princess theater for showtime so showtime tonight is siobhan phillips which is i guess is a comedy um vocalist britain's got talent britain's got talent comedy vocalist but are you ready for some entertainment tonight oh you are going to love this lady the ship after her first show was just buzzing everyone had such a great time she is hysterical and you're gonna have fun whether you want to or not i'm telling you it's gonna be a great show so regal princess siobhan phillips regal princess put your hands And what's really nice about the water shuttle operation tomorrow is it's a bit of a scenic uh, route. You go under the historic fourth bridge as we, so where we drop our anchor and then the water shuttles will take you directly underneath it. It's quite cool. Um, and of course that bridge is over a century old. Good night. It is bad time. It's that time. Yeah, just got back from the show. I didn't record a whole bunch of it, but yeah. anyway, we enjoyed. It was good. Um, let's talk about dinner. Dig into it. Did we do anything else besides play the adult arcade? We don't talk about that either. No. It was it was a little unkind tonight. All right, dinner Very. it is. So MDR obviously. Oh, mm -hmm. look how bright that is. Whoa, Whoa y'all. Uh, you had a shrimp cocktail. I think it's the first time having it on this cruise. It's good. I wish they would not put the sauce over the tails. Oh. It makes it really hard to eat, so you have to like take a fork and then still somehow get the tail part off. That's but true. It was good. 
Yeah, I like, I'm just gonna keep like waving this around. Oh, I should highlight you when you're talking. Oh, there here we go. go. This is the new gimmick. Uh, <laughs> I had the Brie parcel, they called it. And it was like a little phyllo bag with some Brie in it. And, oh, it's not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> I kind of wish it had more brie. I want to say the brie inside yeah. of there was the size of maybe like a large pat of butter. I really wanted some more. It was mostly phyllo. Now the cranberry stuff was delicious. Mm. French fried onions, I mean, interesting touch. Um, peanuts. The white sauce and like it had peanuts in it. I'm like, there was a lot of flavor <laughs> going on. Pretty good, but I want more brie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of hit or miss on that. You had, oh, let's light you up. You had oh, a no. salad. I think it was supposed to be a beet salad. Um, it did have beets in it and like grapefruit segments, cheese, all sorts of stuff. Um, it wasn't like heavily beets, but it was delicious together with the balsamic dressing. Okay, Ooh, light me up again. <laughs> uh, I had a soup, London yellow split pea soup, in fact. And it was pretty good. Um, it had like ham hocks in it. It wasn't a ton of flavor, but I always enjoy a nice split pea soup. So very simple, I approve. Yep. You had a pork chop. It was good. It um, started out really, really good. The cook on it was nice and tender, but then as you like finished getting to the middle section, it got a little more firm, which I'm always oh. iffy on pork chops in general because it's like if they don't cook them right, they're not very tasty. This one had a good flavor though, so I'll give it that. Okay. Uh, I had the Indian dish, which was a paneer and spinach. That's a good combination for me. Everything flavor-wise was great. Papadum was crispy. The rice was good. I just wish there was more of it. But when I finished eating it, I was full. So maybe I don't wish there was more of it, but it was good all around. I don't think I have any issues. There was one whole clove in there, which I had to pick out because I have chomped on a clove before mm, and that's yeah. not pleasant, uh, but good overall. Uh, dessert, you had the exotic sunshine. sunshine. It was very similar to the dessert I had yesterday in looks. So it was like coconut, mango, and passion fruit with like a tart crust, really tasty. So very similar to last night, but just like different ingredients, but I did nice. like it. Uh, I had a warm chocolate cookie with some ice cream and some Hershey syrup on it, and it tasted exactly like that. Oh. wasn't overly warm, but I mean, it was a cookie. The cookie was delicious. It tasted like Hershey syrup because it was dumped all over the top, and ice cream was vanilla. You definitely need a spoon for that. Yeah. Messy. yeah. <laughs> um, but I approve of that dessert, so yeah. let me turn that annoying phone light off, Thank you. and we will say good night. Good night. So, port day tomorrow, mm -hmm. our next to last port. I know, already. Still in Scotland, though. Yeah. Um, We'll see you then. Bye. Good night. <laughs>